Consortium with the St. Kitts Tourism Authority would like to welcome all of you to the 2013 National Tourism Youth Congress. We are confident that although we have fewer schools participating, participating than last year, the competition will be a keenly contested one. We would therefore like to thank the three schools for their participation. The National Tourism Youth Congress is held to select a country representative to compete in the Regional Tourism Youth Congress organized by the Caribbean Tourism Organization. The Congress is structured to mirror a CTO Board of Directors meeting and our participants, participants research and present on key tourism issues. It forms part of the CTO's Youth Tourism Awareness Programs and it is seen as a critical element of their outreach work. As we are all aware, tourism is the main catalyst for growth and development in St. Kitts and Nevis. It is therefore an imperative that all youth are educated about the industry and the opportunities it provides. We therefore take great pleasure in welcoming you to this important event. It is my distinct privilege to deliver brief remarks at today's National Tourism Youth Congress. I bring you greetings and best wishes from the Honorable Minister, Senator Richard Skerritt, Minister of Tourism and International Transport. It is with particular pleasure that I welcome the participants from the three competing high schools here this morning. Your presence attests to your spirit of competitiveness, but even more so to your keen awareness of the importance of the tourism industry and its concomitant issues. This Youth Congress provides a great avenue for you, our young people, to engage in dynamic debate. Over the last few months, you would have, with the invaluable support and assistance of your teachers and peers, done the requisite research and honed your debating skills in order to earn a place here. And for that, we congratulate you. You will, through this medium, attempt to take the next big step to the Caribbean Tourism Organization's Youth Congress, which will be held in Martinique later this year. Today, you will be challenged to speak clearly and convincingly as you articulate the issues. You will also be challenged to think on your feet. More importantly, however, you will give food for thought. You will inspire us to take a fresh look at tourism policies. At the end of this morning's Youth Congress, Someone from among you will be chosen to travel to Martinique as St. Kitts's Junior Tourism Minister. Notwithstanding, I urge you all to think of yourselves as winners in your own right for having participated in today's debate. Remember, today you are participants in this Youth Congress. Tomorrow, you will be the leaders the ministers of tourism, the movers, the shakers, who will shape policies for the survival of this vital tourism industry. We as a society believe in you. We believe in you and this is evidenced by the number of sponsors that have come on board to show their support and to them we say thanks. And so as I close, I wish you well in your deliberations in what is expected to be a very keen and exciting competition. Thank you for your participation and all the very best. Now, this little competition, three schools, two rounds, one winner. Sounds a bit like Iron Chef, it should. The competition is expected to be just as fierce. Now. We have with us from the Baster High School, uh, Delvina Thompson.
I see you have a fan club, that's good. We have from Virchilds High School, Ms. Yuka Thomas. And on my right, we have from Washington Archibald High School, Ms. Anique Bedford. All right, well, let's get straight into it. Now, the questions themselves, there were two questions that the students could choose from. I understand that two persons have chosen the same question, and one school has chosen the other question. We will start with, let's see now here, Miss BHS. But let me just go over a little bit of the rules here. Speakers have, as their prepared topic, they have three minutes to speak. Should a speaker go over the stipulated three minutes, he or she, in this case, all ladies, will lose, pay, lose points based on the following. After one to five seconds, she will lose two points. After six to 10 seconds, she will lose four points. 11 to 15 seconds, will, eight points will be deducted. And then 16 to 20 seconds, a total of 16 points will be deducted from their total. Now just to go over the points system, uh, soundness of points yields 35 points. Logical development, 20. Audibility and clarity, 15. Command of language yields 20 points. Posture and personality, 10 points for a total of 100 points. I ask the ladies to bear that in mind as you go about and duke it out. Now, we shall leap straight into it. And we'll start off on my extreme left with Miss BHS, Delvina Thompson. Your question, as I understand it, was on agritourism. And the question here, I'm going to read it out in its entirety so everyone can understand what they were asked to prepare for. Caribbean agritourism. There's more to it than visiting the farms. According to the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, Caribbean agritourism consists of several approaches that include A, when farmers and agri-processors supply hotels and restaurants with local produce and pro processed foods. B, through the use of natural remedies, in this case bush medicines and organic treatments to promote health and wellness. C, by sharing our agricultural heritage, such as visits to old plantations or agricultural museums. D, through our food, through our local food festivals and culinary traditions. E, with farm-based activities, such as rural bed and breakfasts and farm tourism. And finally, F, through community-based initiatives, such as village fairs, farmers markets, and rum shop tourism. As junior minister of, or commissioner of tourism in your country, select two of the above approaches that you would recommend to your tourism colleagues in your country to help promote agritourism and justify your recommendations. Ms. BHS, Delvina Thompson, you have three minutes. Good morning to all. The Inter-American Institute for Cooperation, AICO, defines agritourism as the integration of indigenous food, culture, heritage, and the environment into a sustainable tourism experience. According to Ina C. Harvey, agro-tourism specialist with AICA, market research indicates that both crews and stayover visitors to the Caribbean are willing to pay premium price for exotic, authentic taste of island life, past and present. Similarly, John Now, chairman of the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation, asserts that this market generates U.S. $41 billion annually. Colleagues, I am confident that with its rich agrarian history, our destination has the goods to deliver a uniquely Kittitian and agro-heritage food tourism product. Two to minutes the left. To the following two initiatives which my ministry will spearhead. One, transform the old sugar factory into a heritage site Two, subsidize hands-on farm tourism experiences. A sugar factory heritage tour will take our guests back in time on a journey through old historical buildings, housing remnants of century-old boilers and grinders, and fascinate them 
with tales of sugar and molasses production and of the humble beginnings of our first national hero as a machinist there. Exhilarating farm tours will whet their appetites as they savor their personal blends of relaxing bush teas, sweetened with local honey, of course, sample local ginger and cherry wines, and reap their choice of fruits from nearby gardens, pineapple, guava, mango, mm. All a recipe for increasing market-led agricultural yield, reducing leakage of foreign exchange, and building partnerships and fostering intersectoral linkages in local enterprise. For example, between the culinary and agro-processing industries. My ministry will tap into the Sugar Industry Diversification Foundation, SIDF, and the Small Entrepreneur and Enterprise Development, SEED, to subsidize these micro-businesses, retrain displaced sugar workers, and empower our talented youth to capitalize on these opportunities for growing and diversifying our tourism product. Really, the win-win opportunities in this niche market are endless. Our guests live their island fantasies to the benefit of our people and economy. Agritourism will contribute to a more robust and sustainable industry, translate into wider distribution of economic returns, and enhance the lives and livelihoods of entire local communities. Three minutes. Agritourism, rooted in our culture and heritage, growing the local tourism industry. I thank you. Wow, calling me surprised. Now, um, our next two contestants are dealing with the topic of multi-generational travel. I will read out the question in its entirety. Multi-generational travel. Some call it multi-generational travel, others call it grand tripping. But the idea of grandparents traveling with their children and grandchildren is very evident today and is one of the fastest growing segments of the travel industry, according to the Travel Industry Association in the USA. According to those same experts, the most important part of organizing a three-generation vacation is to be able to accommodate everyone's needs. As junior minister or commissioner of tourism in your country, Share what advice you would give to your government to facilitate and promote multi-generational travel to your country and how your country's tourism products and services should cater to the varied needs of the three generations. We will start arbitrarily with VHS, Versailles High School, Ms. Duca Thompson. Good morning. Fellow junior ministers, Permit me to make my contribution on the aspect of multi-generational travel. Some call it multi-generational travel, others call it grand tripping. But the idea of grandparents traveling with their children and their grandchildren is very evident today and is one of the fastest growing segments of the travel industry according to the Travel Industry Association in the USA. As a junior minister, there are three ways I would advise the government to attract more multi-generational travelers. These include putting strategies in place to fulfill the multi-general, sorry, the multi-generational traveler's needs, effective marketing techniques, and the use of technology to advertise our country. Firstly, at the hotels, cruises, guest houses, inns, or any other facility that accommodates tourists should have attractive offers like group pricing, celebration event packages, multi-room packages, family-style dinners, and family reunion activities. When spending time in a hotel, multi-room packages should be offered to parents if desired so they can check on their child often. There should be buffet-style dinner offerings which have a wide range of food. They may choose to go horseback riding on the beach, or the more adventurous family members may want to go to Sky Safari and do the zipline tour, or they can visit the Brimstone Hill Fortress National Park for a family picnic where they can be immersed in our rich heritage while drinking in the breathtaking views that this gem has to offer. Secondly, there must 
be a plan in place for attracting the multi-generational market. Emphasize the three key features in all marketing communications. One, memories. Emphasize the times we spend with our loved ones are the most precious and far more valuable than material luxuries. Two, convenience. Both the arrangement and the trip itself will be pre-organized, hassle-free, allowing the traveler to focus on relaxation and reconnection. Last but not least, value. Traveling in large groups have benefits in both prices as well as privileges. Fellow junior ministers, if these facets are utilized, we are bound to tap into the multi-generational market. Finally, because of today's improvement in technology, the government should focus more on the medium. Since the multi-generational traveler is as savvy with new media as any traveler, Time. it is important for travel and hospitality marketers to consider all online blogs, social media, for example, tweeting pictures of families having fun in our destination and related new services. The island should be advertised as a beautiful, peaceful destination. TripAdvisor is a website we could use to feature our country's tourism products. Most persons get their information from internet sources, so we need to use them to our advantage. Conclusively, let us pursue our dreams of selling ourselves as a peaceful, tranquil, and family-friendly destination. I thank you. I turn over to Washington Archibald High School, Ms. Anik Bedford, as she gives her presentation. Multi-generational travelers present a powerful opportunity for the international travel market. Noted, Lindsay Yubroth, president of Preferred Hotel Group. The U.S. Travel Industry Association also affirms that last year, more than 17 million trips spent three generations. 56% of these travelers are interested in the Caribbean. We must, therefore, tap this rapidly growing segment of the travel industry. Fellow junior ministers, good morning. Dorothy Brown from the Philadelphia Inquirer defines multi-generational travel, or grand tripping, as, and I quote, a three-generation trip comprising grandparents, parents, and children traveling together on vacation, end quote. Yearly, family travel, perhaps for a cruise, wedding, or family reunion. Consequently, our government should implement policies to facilitate the development of family-friendly tourism enclaves. Two minutes. The Saddle Hill Adventure Park Initiative at Saddlers is one such venture. Proprietor Calvin Mason asserts that this park will serve as the ideal location for entertainment, relaxation, and family bonding. Incentives such as Start of capital, land, and business licenses must be provided to entrepreneurs like Mason to develop facilities that cater to the diverse individual needs of family members. Although tourism revenue generators like the Sky Safari, which typically caters for younger people, and the Scenic Railway, which generally attracts older individuals, exist, they do not capture the maximum interest of the entire family. A projected 519,000 cruise passengers, according to the Honorable Richard Skerritt, are expected in 2013. Therefore, the enclaves will help to maximize the experience of the multi-generational cruise passengers. I therefore recommend that we forge strong partnerships with stakeholders. The Ministry of Culture should partner with the proprietor of Saddle Hill Park to create a cultural circus for children. And why don't we package Brimstone Hill as a classic wedding venue? Proprietors should also partner with hoteliers, tour and travel operators to maximize the financial benefits of multi-generational travel. In short, our Ministry of Information and local media houses must promote multi-generational travel to more aggressive marketing. Emphasis on our beautiful scenery, hospitality, hospitality local cuisine, and indeed, wellness, sports, eco, cultural, and heritage tourism is essential. In closing, we can reap significant benefits from the multi-generational niche markets by developing family-friendly enclaves and forging strong partnerships with stakeholders. I thank you. 
Now, our second round is the dreaded mystery question. Now, even I don't know the question, so it's as much a surprise to me as it is to you. Are you ladies ready? All right. The mystery question is, globally, countries are focusing on sustainable tourism. What do you understand that to mean for your country? Again, globally, countries are focusing on sustainable tourism. What do you understand that to mean for your country? I'll give the judges a moment to gather themselves. and They will let me know when they're ready. And remember, you have one minute to speak and you have one minute to prepare. and pencil. All right. You have one minute. The sustainable development of our tourism industry here on the island is very important to everyone. It allows the tourism product to be developed in a better way that can impact locals and tourists. It is important, it is important for us as individuals and locals to develop, our, to develop our tourism product by having activities that is linked to our culture and heritage that will attract the, the attention and the, expand, and the expectations of the, tour, of the tourists. Thus, we can have tourists eating local foods like our local dishes, dumpling, salt fish, um, fried fish, and things of that nature. So in order to impact the sustainable tourism industry, we must make sure that when the tourists come to our island, their expectations are well met, and the decisions that we make today can benefit our tourism product in the future. One minute. Thank you. All right, very good. We will now turn to Virtuals High School. Good morning. Tourism is very important in our island federation because agriculture is on a very short supply because of our land. So it is better if we choose tourism because tourists look for a beach experience, many different cuisines which we have, and forests and rainforests. So I think it is very good for us to have tourism. To our final speaker, Washington Archibald High School. Fellow junior ministers, I'm sure we all concur that tourism is the main engine that propels our economy. Therefore, it is important for us to sustain this industry. According to, sustainable, according to sustainability.org, sustainability is the act of preserving while using our resources. Evidently, tourism is our main source of income, and so we should preserve this way. For as my fellow junior minister said before, it's what we do today will seconds. affect our tourism later. And so when tourists come, we want to ensure that they have a good experience, but we also need to make sure that when they leave, our sites are just as they met them. So when other tourists come, they're able to experience that same tranquility and serenity that the tourists before had. And so to do this, we should implement rules such as no littering, no touching, to preserve the heritage of One our minute. country. And so... Sustainability is important. I thank you. The judges deliberate there and make their deliberations for the final to determine the winner. Uh, at this time, for the presentation of prizes, we will now like to invite, or uh, before we go into the actual presentation, we'd like to invite Mrs. Sabina Vaughan, Marketing Officer from the St. Kitts Nevis Anguilla National. On behalf of the uh, St. Kitts Nevis Anguilla National Bank Limited, um, I have to say that I'm very pleased to be here today um, representing the bank and our board of directors. Um, I also want to uh, join with the uh, chief judge um, in congratulating each of the participants. I have to say that um, I remember distinctly last year's competition 
and there was there were gentlemen represented and I would have liked maybe it's just a bias but I would have liked to see um, more young men involved this year as well so I just like to encourage our young men especially those in the audience there's always 2014 I'd like to encourage you to get on board because last year you all were very well represented um, in fact Baste High won last year and it was a young man who won but this year really counts, and this year Washington Archibald won, right? <laughs> I'm not taking any sides. <laughs> um, over the years, National has always supported activities and initiatives that um, promote the total well-being of our young persons, and our sponsorship here today is no exception. So on behalf of the uh, St. Kitts Nevis Anguilla National Bank, I wish to congratulate each one of the participants. It would have been nice if I had my way, I would send each one of them to Martinique in October, but that, that's not possible. But um, I want to congratulate you on a job well done, very well done, and to wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Representing the Bastyr High School, Ms. Thompson, please come forward to this. Virtues High, Ms. Thomas. Thank you. And last but not least, Washington Archibald High. And okay, as we were told that we were given also um, sponsorships from various restaurants within St. Kitts. So we now present um, some gift prizes or coupons to the participants. So in third place, we have lunch for two from Balaho restaurant, which goes to the uh, Virtuals High School. For the second place winner, lunch for two from Serendipity restaurant. Bastia High. And for the first place winner, Washington Archibald High, dinner for two at the St. Kitts Marriott Blue Restaurant. Also, um, among the restaurants that have been um, sponsored here today, the Ocean Terrace Inn will be providing lunch for three, the three participants, uh, the, a teacher from the winning school, and a representative from the St. Kitts uh, Ministry of Tourism or the St. Kitts Authority to be along with them for dinner. Uh, we now uh, distribute the cash prizes for the participants. The sum of $150. And this, is, this came from, well, all of the cash prizes, I should say, must, um, was given, especially for the, part, for the schools, was given from National Bank. But this $150 was given from National Bank for the third place student. So this goes to Virtuals High. Oh, sorry, it's from Development Bank. Um, in second place, it's $250, which was sponsored by, sponsored by Digicel. And this goes to Bastia High. In first place, the sum of $350 from the Ministry of Tourism or the St. Kitts Tourism Authority, which goes to Washington Archibald High School. Third place, the same sum is $150 for Washington um, Virtual Side. In second place, Bastia High, the sum of $250. And in first place, Washington Archibald High School, the sum of $350. Now we go into the trophies. For third place, the third place trophy is sponsored by the St. Kitts Nevis Development Bank, which goes to the Virtuals High School. In second place, 
trophy was sponsored by Digicel, which goes to Bastia High School. First place trophy sponsored by Social Security, which goes to Washington Archibald High School. Again, we would like the teacher from the Washington Archibald High School to please come forward. So Washington High School, championship trophy.